Oh, sweet. New enemy. I wonder what it drops. I, uh, maybe this one. Yeah, no, that's definitely not right. Hey everyone, this is Kelchips, and in this devlog we're talking about how I added items and a shop to my yet unnamed indie game. So now there's finally a use for all that gold that you've been looting from goblins and skeletons all this time. You can buy apples and knives in a shop using the gold, which I've implemented a system for as well, which is probably long overdue, but we'll talk all about minimum viable product and all that stuff later in the devlog. Hope you'll stick around to see how I made this little shop featuring everyone's favorite placeholder NBC art, Pinky. But first, I'm happy to announce that the Kale Chips Discord is now live. The link is in the description, go check it out. It's a place where you can discuss the game, submit your suggestions, and generally just hang out and talk to other game developers. There are some super rad people on there already, and I'm happy we have our own space now to chat. Anyway, roll the intro. Alright, so the inventory system from a couple of devlux ago was functional, but it still had a long way to go. Even though it could store items, I didn't make a way to buy or loot items from enemies, so it was just filled with random items every time it loaded in. This week, I wanted to finish that up and go from this to this. But before we get started on that, there's a new enemy to introduce. As much as I love the goblin and skeleton, the dungeons were feeling pretty lonely with just those two guys, so I took the first couple days this week to draw up a little slime guy and animate it. This was my first stab at animating personally, so I chose something simple. And again, I don't know how many times I have to qualify this, but I don't really call myself an artist. But, you know, I'm getting there a little bit more each day. And this slime actually feels pretty slimy, so I guess that's a good thing for slimes. In the game, the red slime has the same AI as the skeleton, but it moves by jumping instead of walking. These enemies follow the same AI at their core. They just walk between random points in the room until you come into range, at which point they start chasing you until either they die or you get outside of a longer range called the de-aggro range. For people interested in this chase behavior, I'd check out the A-Star Pathfinding Project. It's amazing for projects made in Unity which helps a lot with pathing around obstacles in the scene like trees and rocks. You could have meant an A-star pathfinding algorithm yourself, but that would be pretty complicated and honestly this library is super approachable and a great resource. The enemies don't actually have this pathfinding behavior themselves, they're actually just children of a pathfinding object that's doing all the movement for real. But that's just an implementation detail and may or may not be appropriate for your game once you decide to pursue this. Anyway, with that little detour out of the way, time for the big task this week. Adding item drops in a shop system. Up until now, enemies only drop coins, but even those don't do anything when you pick them up, you just walk into them, they play a little coin sound, and then they disappear. Not really satisfying. So the first task was to implement a loot object that drops on death. When you pick something up, the inventory is searched to find the appropriate slot to put it in. This can be a slot that's currently holding the same item so it matches and it currently has space, or it can be an empty slot. If none of these exist, the item isn't picked up because there's not space for it in your inventory. There was actually a little bug where an empty item was being picked up instead of the apple, which made this really weird ghost item, but after some tweaks and after coding an item drop, you were able to pick up items and use them in the inventory. Right now I have it so that the slime enemy drops apples which heal you, and then the skeleton enemy drops these knives, but that can change pretty easily in the future, those are just, you know, the two enemies and two items that I have for now. But there still was not a polish to this. Picking up an item gave very little feedback, which feels bad as a player. I mean, the only thing that happens is in the hotbar, you can see the number click up, and if it's not an item that's in your hotbar, you won't even see that. So you didn't get the satisfying response of picking up an item, which I think is one of the really awesome parts of a dungeon crawling RPG. Moreover, walking over all the items individually to pick them up could get kind of tedious, and a lot of you, and I mean a lot. I think this was my most popular suggestion. I've been suggesting that I add a coin magnet to this game, so that was the next step. A pretty simple homing pattern isn't too hard to implement. I just have the items accelerate towards the player when the player character is in range of the item. But it's not super satisfying, it just moves to you in a straight line and that really wasn't that great. I wanted loot collection to feel more like this burst of coins spreading out and then all that treasure rushing back towards you. A game that I studied to achieve this effect was Dead Cells. It's a game that I admire a lot and it has super awesome loot explosions when you kill enemies. So I took the time to fiddle around with true homing behavior and it went like this. Yeah, I think this is like the third time on my channel that I've tried to make true homing behavior and it never works out, but uh, I think it's sort of like my Achilles heel as a coder. But um, yeah, not exactly perfect, but after some quick bug fixes, here's the final result. The difference is subtle between this and a fake homing behavior, but hopefully this makes combat more satisfying. Then I played with Unity's animation system to create some pickup text when you track item streaks. So if you pick up multiple items quickly, it shows how many you've picked up, like X1 or X2 or X3. And with these things done, I was pretty happy with picking up items. Then it was time to work on the shop. The slot system that I talked about a couple of devlogs ago came in handy here. 
The shop uses the same base slot architecture that I talked about in that devlog. It's the same slot that you see in the inventory and in the hotbar, but it has different actions on left and right click. But before coding the shop slots, I drew out a basic layout using the old inventory slots. So at the beginning, they actually share the same code as the inventory slots, and you could use them just like inventory slots. You could like put items and take them out of the shop as if they were just you know normal inventory. Kind of interesting, but uh, that changed quickly. So while the ordinary inventory slots have functions for picking up and placing down on left and right clicks, the shop should only have one function, and that's for the left click, which checks if you have enough money, and if so, it adds the item to your inventory and subtracts the gold from your counter. I think a good general rule of thumb for all the architectures that I've described in my many devlogs so far is that you should think about what core behaviors a generic type of whatever class of object you're trying to create has, and then decide how those are different between the different specific types of that object. Okay, I think that even confused myself, but basically, I made a generic object, that was the slot, but that had a generic definition for what happens when you left click it and what happens when you right click it. Now for each of the different slot types, that's the inventory slot, the hopper slot, and the shop slot, those each implement the left and right click methods differently. So they perform different behaviors when you left and right click them. Once you have all that together, the slots as a whole perform some pretty complex behavior. Anyway, when you left click on a shop slot object, it adds the item to your inventory and subtracts the gold from your counter. But what gold counter? Oh right, we forgot one of those. Yeah, so up until now I've been ignoring some pretty critical elements of the game, such as a gold counter and an HP bar. I guess those simple things just slip by you when there are bigger systems to code, but I think this has actually been a mistake. I mean, there's this concept of like minimum viable product in game design, which means you should make a playable prototype before worrying about finer details. So basically do everything absolutely essential to your game first, and then make sure it's fun before using the resources like time or even money to refine it. But I've sort of glossed over these UI things, which I think are definitely baseline requirements. Anyway, those being said, I went back and finally implemented those, and made a coin counter and an HP bar. I spent probably longer than necessary animating this coin counter thing, which is ironic considering all the stuff I just said about minimum viable product, but I'm just gonna ignore that because, come on, isn't it satisfying to pick up coins now? After that, implementing the shop was just a matter of a lot of code. Right now the items are just the knife and the apple, and the prices are randomized, but I plan for this to be eventually attached to an NPC. For the time being, it's just bound to the Q key to turn it on and off, but eventually the shop is only going to be available in the town when you talk to different shopkeepers. Although I'm not opposed to also having some form of in-dungeon shop. I'm thinking that those are going to be part of the game world instead of a UI system though, kind of like how Binding of Isaac does shops. A quick tip for any Unity developers wanting to make smooth UI animations. The Unity animator is actually really great for this, and I'd highly recommend it. Opening and closing the shop was looking kind of jarring, they just flash on and off on the screen, so I animated a quick open and close animation, and it really makes it feel a lot more professional. If you're interested, all of the UI elements are kept off screen, and the animator has a property which modifies the anchored position of different elements to give the illusion that they're stored above and below the screen. In between the open and close animations, an idle animation plays on loop that just keeps the anchor position in place on the screen. So there are just three animations, an animation that brings the UI element on screen, an animation that keeps it there, and an animation that brings it off screen. So it seamlessly bridges between those three animations. I'm actually pretty new to Unity, and animations like this were something I was used to having to write in code, but Unity's animation system has fixed all that for me, and you can work in keyframes instead, which I think is a lot more natural workflow for making these kind of animations. It's something worth looking into, especially if you come from a different engine. It was a little bit of work up front to learn this new system, but I think in the long run it pays so much. Alright, with the shop fixed, and a lot of bug fixing in between, the last thing that I had to do was finally connect the dungeons in the town. The overarching gameplay loop of this project is going to be traveling between two places each day. First, traveling as far down into the dungeons as possible, and then second, spending your cash and buying things to develop your town. This past week, I feel like I finally developed enough to just bring the ends of that loop together. So you can go now from the dungeons to the town and back to the dungeons over and over and over again, which is pretty awesome. So the first thing I did was draw up these level end objects. One is the ladder, and another is a sort of like scroll thing. These are meant to appear once you defeat the last room in each dungeon level and the ladder brings you down further into the dungeon while the scroll teleports you back to town. Hooking this up wasn't too difficult, but what was difficult was passing persistent data, like the amount of gold you have and your inventory between scenes. Since the town and the dungeon are stored in different scenes, all the data from one scene gets destroyed when you enter a new scene. Now, there are a lot of great comprehensive ways to pass this data, like writing to local storage and reading it when loading each scene, but at this point I kinda just wanted to finish up the gameplay loop and make a way to travel between the town and the dungeons without too much trouble, so I marked the UI object as persistent so that it's shared between the two scenes. This conveniently preserves most of the information, like inventory contents and gold, since those are stored in components on the UI object, but it doesn't allow for saving and loading between sessions, so right now if you close the game you lose everything. 
but that's something for later. Right now, I just wanted to reach that major milestone of being able to travel between the two locations over and over again. For now, I'm just taking the win that the gameplay loop of Unnamed Indie Game has reached a major milestone. It's now actually playable. So you can't do anything in the town yet, and the dungeons are pretty monotone. But I think I've reached a brand new stage of development, which is content creation. Now this finally means more enemies and weapons, more stuff to do with your gold, and more NPCs to talk to. Real NPCs. I'm sorry to all the Pinky fans out there. That being said, I've been saying I've been entering the content creation stage for a while, and there always seems to be just other stuff that interrupts that, so fingers crossed that technical debt doesn't catch up to me just yet. Look out for some new weapons, items, and town stuff in the next devlog though. And join the Discord! Here's some awesome art that people have been submitting. I just want to shout out to everyone that's made fan art in the Discord. It's like super awesome. It really motivates me to continue working on this project as hard as I can. I really appreciate all of it, and I love our small community. Anyway, that's it for this devlog. Shop is implemented, gameplay loop is finished, and we added a new slime to boot. Come hang out in the Discord if you want, like I said, link is in the description. And as always, thanks y'all.